After World War II, helicopter technology made great progress, and it set off a trend of light-slash-ultralight helicopters. Countries around the world believed that this type of aircraft could be used to carry out special operations. In 1971, the CAMOV Design Bureau was tasked with developing a military ultralight helicopter, which is the Ka-56 Hornet. According to the Soviet military's requirements, the Ka-56 had to be foldable and transportable in a cylindrical container with a diameter of 500 mm. The reason for this specific size requirement was that the Soviet military hoped to be able to launch the container directly from a submarine's torpedo tube. It seems that this should be considered for special operations or covert activities. The structure of the Ka-56 is very simple, with a simple foldable skeletal frame for the fuselage. The small tail boom also serves as the tail landing gear for support, with dual vertical tails installed on top. Its engine is a 40 horsepower air-cooled rotary engine, capable of burning the fuel used in regular cars. The rotor is a four-blade coaxial counter-rotating propeller, and the blades can be detached. The Ka-56 has a takeoff weight of 220 kilograms, with an assembly time of no more than 10 minutes. According to calculations, the helicopter can reach a maximum flight speed of 150 km per hour, a cruising speed of 110 km per hour, and a maximum altitude of 1,700 meters. With such a small aircraft, it naturally cannot carry much fuel, and it is estimated that its maximum range is 120 km. This is sufficient for reconnaissance, personnel infiltration, or evacuation as a special or espionage device. In reality, the Ka-56 has never actually flown, the reason being that the power of the rotary engine is a bit weak for this small aircraft and a suitable alternative could not be found within the Soviet Union. Therefore, this project was put on hold. From a practical standpoint, there is another problem, the utility of ultralight helicopters is very poor. During the same period, countries such as Britain, France, and the United States have developed different structures of such helicopters, with similar intentions of being used for special operations or espionage. Without exception, they all abandoned this technological line due to the inherent flaws of ultralight helicopters. They are too small, usually only equipped with simple instruments and an open cockpit, and their flying capabilities cannot compare to conventional helicopters. A slightly strong side wind could potentially cause an accident. Over the past few decades, there have been many classic special operations cases worldwide, but most have used conventional equipment, with not a single case using ultralight helicopters. This indicates that this type of equipment is not very practical. 